This is Stacy Marshall with Printware Magazine. Matt Vassallo with the RhinestoneWorld.com. Richard Greaves with ScreenMaking.com. Brian Walker with RTP Apparel. You are listening to the Two Regular Guys Podcast. 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 It's hosted by Terry Combs. Terry Combs. Terry Combs. And Aaron Montgomery. Aaron Montgomery. Aaron Montgomery. Keep on listening. I don't know if these guys are that regular. All right. Well, welcome to the show. It's Friday, October 18th, 2019. I'm Terry Combs, and you can find me at terrycombs.com. And I'm Aaron Montgomery, and you can find me at aaronmontgomery.info. Uh, today, Terry, uh, and now that we're doing video, we can't lie about the fact that we're not wearing tuxedos, but uh, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's right. That, that's just for the announcements, though. Maybe this year we got to make that happen. Uh, you know? We'll, we'll, we'll I- like, Figure out how to get into the budget to rent some tuxedos. Unless as you as I mentioned before, Aaron, uh, I never returned the one that uh, from your wedding. So <laughs> there we go. Are they still billing you for that? <laughs> uh, possibly. That's what that random bill is every. Uh, so. Anyways, we're going to be announcing the nominations for the uh, Reggies today, but uh, stay tuned. You know, so that'll be the first part, and that's always exciting. We love talking about that. We're gonna talk about last year's winners and all that kind of fun stuff. So it always makes for a good show. But we're, we're going to do a little bonus stuff. Uh, Terry, we are going to ask you, what does the future of screen printing hold? And and you're uniquely situated to kind of answer that question. I mean, you've been a screen printer, an instructor, kind of an advocate for screen printing. I don't know. I don't want to date you here, Terry, but it may be, you know, 40 it's years. 40 years. Yeah. Exactly. 40 years. <laughs> 40 years. I can't believe it either. So. I know. I know. You don't look a day over. Anyhow. Um, <laughs> so... But that, like I said, that puts you in a really neat, unique place because you're also very actively involved in the direct to garment world through your role as a, I don't know what your official role is, but I call you a sales dog <laughs> <laughs> at, at equipment zone there. So, um, you know, that puts you in a really unique space to answer that question. Well, you know, uh, yeah, Aaron, and, and uh, it, it's a question that that comes up more and more, you know, what, what uh, what's the future of screen printing in this digital world? So we're going to... Uh, I've given a lot of thought to it, and we're gonna gonna have a little chat about it after the announcements. Excellent, excellent. Well, that's great, and uh, we've got some regulators checking in all, already this morning. So Sandy checking in, the inventor of regulators, Christine Shreve checking in. <laughs> so, uh, and then as usual, we have the amazing Eric Campbell uh, in the comment section for us here today. So thank you very much, uh, Eric. And uh, here we go. We've got uh, Dot Tone Dan. I always love having Dan along for the ride, and when we talk talk uh, screen printing later today. Uh, that is going to be a good part of it. So one other thing, and I didn't tell you about this, Terry, but uh, I am trying something fun, new, exciting. Uh, we're multicasting today. And right now it's just going to my own personal YouTube page because I got to figure out some things. But uh, we may start multicasting to both YouTube and Facebook at the same time. Pretty so slick. I feel like huh? a superhero. So oh, Kurt, Multi. Curtis is actually checking in from the YouTube channel here today. Oh, very so, good. Curtis, thanks for joining us. And uh, and Cindy King, who has been on the show and is a, a regulator as well. So good morning, everybody. We will. Uh, I'll get stuck doing that for a long time, Terry. So how about we uh, <laughs> we cover some news and get into this here? Very good. Let's do it. What do you have? Okay. Well, um, first, uh, our, our friends over at Anchor Bookkeeping, Emil, uh, when he was on, and, and Terry, you were out, and I actually had my wife guest host that program with me. Right. Uh, they had such good response from that, that, uh, they wanted to kind of give back to the regulators. So, um, they're offering our regulators a 20% discount. If you sign up over at anchorbookkeeping.com and, uh, see if I can get the code up on screen here too. But, uh, if you use this code two reg guys, 20, uh, that will get you 20% off over there at anchorbookkeeping.com. So again, just, uh, great response uh, to that program and to Emil's information. And I, I think it's a great service to uh, to help those small businesses out there. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Aaron, I have a, a kind of an interesting announcement. Uh, Alpha Broder said late Thursday, yesterday, that it has completely recovered from a cyber attack it suffered earlier in the week. Uh, out of uh, suburban Philadelphia, the firm said, uh, in an initial statement issued Monday that it was struck by a, a strand of ransomware. Uh, the attack focused on Alpha Broder's order processing and shipping platform. After days of disruptive service and uh, uh, collaboration between Alpha Broder's in-house cyber team and expert forensics 
outside company, the supplier said that all orders and shipping methods are up and running at 100% as of Thursday afternoon. And they, uh, the quote is, we will have a backlog on FedEx and UPS orders and we will work through this over the next few days. So, you know, if uh, if uh, you know a lot of a lot of sub, uh, you know decorators, uh, myself included, uh, you know, would uh, would place an order assuming that I would be getting it the next day or the day after. So, I'm uh -huh. sure that that's been disruptive not only for Alpha Broder but for for a lot of folks out there that uh, who purchased from them. And they have a they have quite a quite a list of uh, of of decorators that, that buy from them. So yeah, uh, yeah good, definitely. good on them for <laughs> getting the, ahead of that, but gosh, it's uh, frightening, you know? Yeah, it is frightening. And, and honestly, you know, we're seeing more and more of that in our space, you know, so make sure that, you know, you're safe out there and you have all the, the right things and get the right people to help you with that stuff. Um, you know, it's not on the news list, but I saw something about, uh, cafe press is just taking a pounding on their data breach that, that right. happened. And, uh, in fact, there's some lawsuits going to be happening there. So poor cafe presses, uh, I don't know if to say poor, but Hey, you know, <laughs> they're, they're taking a, taking a bit of a, a beating, um, heck, uh, a very large company in the space that I'm involved with in sublimation, uh, Colorado Timberline, uh, went out of business and, and pointed towards a ransomware attack that, uh, happened and they shuttered the doors after that. Now, right. That's, uh, what, front facing statement was, was that why, is why they closed down. There was, uh, there's certainly a lot of rumors that I will not be spreading, um, <laughs> at least publicly. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, you know, that's something to, yeah. to think about and, and to be aware of uh, that you need to kind of stay out in front of those things. So um, I had one more news item then, Terry, before uh, we, we get into the whole thing here, but uh, Trotec Laser has acquired Engravers Network. So effective immediately, the acquisition gives the laser manufacturer opportunities to expend, extend its market reach and broaden the services and support for new and existing customers, uh, according to a press release. So uh, we'll have a link to that uh, press release in the show notes. And uh, Eric will be, um, oh man, he's even put, look at this guy. He's all over the place. He's got uh, links to the uh, Cafe Press story and uh, man, he is on you, top of it. As you know, usual. I, a lot of people don't realize that uh, what how much work is involved in uh, in being the producer for the show. And you and I were talking uh, <laughs> before we went on the air, and and you said, "Oh, I'm going to have to make sure that uh, that Eric copies this and has it and posts it that, that something actually different." And as we were talking, we could see his cursor going before he even heard us <laughs> going <laughs> copying it. So, yeah, yeah. so good good job, Eric. <laughs> good job, Eric. Uh, we should give him a raise, Terry. We should uh, triple. Uh, Eric, what you're what you're getting now? True, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good stuff. It is a great economy. <laughs> <laughs> the economy is booming. All right, that's right. Three well, beers next time we see you. <laughs> yeah, three beers. <laughs> it's science, Eric. It's science. It's science. Yeah. <laughs> yeah sure. All right. Well, Aaron, before we dive in, uh, we want to thank all of. Uh, the two regular guys, uh, podcast listeners, the 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 regulators. If you are listening to the podcast version, we would appreciate it if you would share with your friends so that they can become regulators too. Plus, if you would uh, uh, give us a review on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever you're listening to the podcast, we would greatly appreciate it. And we are also looking for guests on the show. If you or anyone you know wants to join us, go to Calendly. <laughs> Calendly. <laughs> That's a tough one. <laughs> yeah, Eric, Eric will put it up. Yeah. <laughs> Calendly.com slash two, the number two regular guys. And if you are joining us on the live feed via Facebook, we'd love to have interaction with you and want to hear your comments and questions on the discussion. And uh, give us a shout out to let folks know you are tuned in and uh, looking forward to uh, talking and having uh, some interaction with folks when we're talking about screen printing and the digital world, whether you are a screen printer or you're a digital decorator, we would like to have, have your comments. Yeah. So in, in that said, Aaron, let's, let's hear a word from our new sponsor, Impressions Expo. What is Impressions Expo? Impressions Expo, formerly ISS, is the premier trade show dedicated to the imprinted and decorated apparel industry. Five shows are produced annually in each region of the U.S., including Long Beach, California, Atlantic City, New Jersey, Orlando, Florida, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and Fort Worth, Texas. 
Each of the five annual shows also features over 30 seminars and hands-on workshops in categories such as screen printing, embroidery, digitizing, digital decorating, and much more. Visit ImpressionsExpo.com for more details and see us at the shows in 2020. Exclusively for two regular guys listeners, the regulators. Use the promo code regular guys, i.e. Again, that is regular guys, i.e. for a free expo pass. All right. Well, thanks again to Impressions Expo, and thanks for including me in that video. I don't know if you saw me, Aaron, but uh, look at you, sales dog in it, right there. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I have to tell you, uh, we are getting our name badges ready for uh, Printing United, formerly SGIA, and uh, and uh, somebody was bringing them into to Harry Oster's office, and you know we were having a video check because that's the way people do business today. You don't have to be there. <laughs> and and she goes, "Hey, look!" And she held up my name badge, and I finally got my request. It says Terry Combs, sales dog. <laughs> 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 so so look for that uh, when you're walking around the show next week for anybody going to uh, to uh, the the former SGIA show, Printing United, and. Uh, yeah. Come by and say hello. And by the way, Aaron, I, I wanted to mention, uh, you know, we're going to be updating our intro. We have people from the industry. Anybody that, yeah. that's heard the intro, uh, here's a lot of different folks from the industry. And I'm going to have my digital recorder with me. So if you want to be a part of the intro, come by. And uh, it's it's a two-sentence card you read. And, and uh, you can be a part of the intro for the next year. Excellent. Yeah, that'll be good. And, and one other thing we forgot to mention in the news section, and Thank you, Christine. Uh, there was a fantastic article in Printware Magazine uh, about the Women in the Industry podcast and and, and group that uh, came from it. So, uh, she, and we did get a nice mention, and, and we really appreciate that, Christine. Uh, being being, uh, <laughs> it didn't call us grandfathers. Uh, godfathers, I'm fine with. Grandfathers, I'm not, I'm not ready for that yet. I know you're a grandfather, Terry. I am four uh, times. You are man. <laughs> All right. Good stuff. But uh, so, yes, check that out. Uh, Christine, if you can post a link to that, we'll, we'll get that up here, too. So that's uh, awesome. We'll, I, we'll add I, that I, into show notes. I didn't realize that 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 was there. I hadn't seen it. So that's yeah. uh, that's interesting news. Well, Terry, I'll send it to you as well. And you can read okay. it. Too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Cindy says uh, we're supposed to be there at uh, the Printing United show. So she will look for you. So um, and there we go. Oh, Eric's Eric's already on it. He's got it here. So here's the link to that. Uh, that article that was mentioned from uh, Christine there. So good stuff. Um, and then uh, I don't know what it is about that music that they have with that video for impressions expo there, but man, it really gets me moving. So I'm, <laughs> I'm glad I covered the screen because I'm dancing the whole time. <laughs> All right. Terry, well, let's, let's dive into this. It's Reggie time. If we had it's a Reggie time, I would play it, but I don't yeah. have that on, uh, on the, queued up yet but uh <laughs> eric's probably looking for one right now i know it's probably gonna end <laughs> miraculously but uh anyhow uh terry you, why don't you start us off what's the first category this year yeah yeah the uh, two regular guys award seventh annual two regular guys award who, who knew yeah. aaron when we uh when we started this how uh how big it would get and yeah uh, yeah you know what uh actually before we get to the first category though i, I t- should have read the outline terry you had it all laid out there i talked it all in there man <laughs> i know i know so, t- talk to us first about kind of the for those of you that aren't familiar with the reggies and i'm guessing most of you are so just a, a real brief kind of what is it why is it what are the rules how does it work uh you know what well, you know, the, of dollars and prizes, all that. Kind of <laughs> right. There's a lot of satisfaction involved in it. Oh, but okay. uh, <laughs> the uh, the Reggie Awards are the two regular guy awards, and and the only awards that we're aware of in the industry that are first nominated by the industry and then voted on by the industry. All, all we do, Aaron, is uh, facilitate this. We yeah. we we don't uh, we get one vote just like everybody else, and yeah. and. Uh, we just thought it was, uh, you know, seven years ago. Thought, you know, there there needs to be something where people can be recognized in the industry for for what they do, and and uh, had no idea how it would explode. Our the the awards show is one of our most listened to shows every year. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll walk into trade shows and and we'll see somebody's Reggie Award on display at the show, and especially ones for for customer service and that that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, it's. Uh, it, it's going to be a, a link where you can go and make nominations. And what we do is we'll take the top 
usually five nominees for every category uh, based on how many times somebody's been nominated. So mm -hmm. keep that in mind. And uh, uh, there are folks out there who are going to be publishing this information, you know, uh -huh. different companies and different individuals. So if, if you uh, want to uh, not only be nominated, but, uh, but to win an award, you have to get out there in social media and, and, and share a little bit with it, yeah. with the folks as well. For sure. Yeah. I mean, the, the shameless uh, self-promotion, we're all about it, but, you know, yeah. do that. Heck yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> like, like you said, Terry, you know, our job here is just to facilitate this, but, but here's, here's the deal. At the end of the day, it's a community building opportunity. It's a way for people to recognize people that need recognition. It, it does become a little bit of a popularity contest and that's totally okay. I mean, that's, that's kind of half the fun, you know, get out there, uh, nominate yourself, nominate other people, uh, recognize right. people, you know, it, for us, it's been fantastic because there's been people that have been nominated that we weren't aware of. And as long as you and I have been doing this, you know, that always still amazes me. Yeah. Me um, too. And, and so we get an opportunity to connect with them and, and, and to, you know, we've had them on the show after the fact and, and, you know, kind of just, uh, again, it's all about that kind of community. So it's not this cutthroat, you know, uh, I mean, we've had some heated, <laughs> uh, you know, down to the last couple of votes kind of thing. Right. And, uh, um, and, but that's, you know, that's half the fun of it. You know, no, everybody was, was very uh, humble in defeat and, and humble in winning. And uh, it, it was perfect. So uh, that's the way we want this to be. And, and uh, you know, so should it ever get out of hand, we may have to shut it down. But so far, <laughs> seven years running, it's been fantastic. It's been a lot of fun. Um, and, and so that's what we want to continue to have here. So, well, and, 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 you know, Aaron, it's, yeah. it, it gets very competitive, but I don't believe there's ever been any winner in any category that wasn't deserving of, uh, of the award. So absolutely that's, that's the important thing to know. Absolutely. And, and, uh, you know, it, it the cream does kind of rise to the top and, and, and some good stuff there. So Christine says it's important to recognize those who are contributing. The Reggie awards means something because they show that people care about the industry and seek out those who are doing good and helping to lift the industry as a whole. And uh, very, very well put again, Christine, our uh, unofficial official writer for the two regular guy <laughs> and uh, always uh, does a great job summarizing what we are trying to say here, Terry. So <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> Perfect. All all right, Terry. Well, now I jumped the gun, but now let's go ahead and get this started off. So what's the first category, please? The first category is best new product. And last year's winner, Aaron, was in brilliance, Stitch Artist 3D Foam Underlay. And, and they won with 48% of the vote. So that was a pretty substantial uh, number uh, considering there were five nominees in this category. So uh, any new product that, that, that you, uh, uh, have experienced using or or maybe you have a new product that that uh, you want to uh, to nominate let's uh, let's get those nominations uh, yep. entered yep. yeah there's been some there's been some you know fantastic winners in that uh, in that category over the years uh, in fact if I go back to and let's see if it pops up for me here um, nope that wasn't it maybe it was the year before uh, and the name has just escaped me. So I'm going to just pretend like I know what I'm talking about here for one second until it pops back up for me. Here. <laughs> uh, the gentleman had, uh, had just passed away. Terry, help me out here. Um, screen print guy that uh, everybody. Oh, Joe Clark. Thank you. Uh, he, one of his products uh, won the award or, or was nominated. I can't remember a few years back. And and so those kinds of those kinds of things. So that award is all about something that's kind of made an impact here in, in 2019. It doesn't right. necessarily have to be brand new this year. Maybe it's been around for a little while. Um, in fact, I think the uh, the DTG, the uh, F2100 won one year, and it had been out for about a year or so, but it really right. kind of made its impact that year. So that's uh, that's what that category is all about there. So let me get to the second category. Go, oh, go ahead, Terry. Uh, I was just going to say, Aaron, uh, we didn't announce this. The form is up on our website, correct? It is up on the website, yep. Uh, so if you just head over to uh, to Reggie's there, um, it should uh, should be right there. And uh, but uh, we'll get it posted here in just a second as well. Um, once I get to that, but let me let me uh, get the second uh, category, and then while you're doing the third category, I'll go find the form because it didn't show up where I thought it was going to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, all right. So the second category is best sales or customer service representative, and uh, last year the winner was Lisa Potts from the Rhinestone World with 43% of the votes. So again, uh, uh, very. Uh, 
positive uh, response for Lisa. And we got to have Lisa on one of our programs this last year with Christine in the uh, Women in the Industry podcast. So that was great to get to meet her and talk to her a little bit more. And of course, the intrepid uh, Eric Campbell has got the link up there for the nomination form for us. So thank you, Eric. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, what about the uh, the third category here, Terry? All right. The third category is the company that provides the best customer service. And last year, that was, again, in brilliance with 47% of the vote. It was 818 votes to 807 votes, uh, just edging out Rhinestone World, who is uh, always uh, competitive in the, in this uh, in all these categories. But uh, that that's how close it gets, folks. We were uh, over 1,600 votes in just these two uh, two folks, and there were three other nominees as well. That uh, so there, there were quite a few votes in this category. But this, you know, this is one that that yes, you will you'll be walked by somebody's booth at a trade show, and they will have on display their Reggie Award for giving the best customer service. Because hey, what what better way to say yes, we're going to take care of you than than say we are <laughs> we have award winning customer service. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, that, and we always love that, you know, and, and that always makes us stop when we're walking around the shows and <laughs> come up to talk to you. Right. So <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. Um, so the fourth category, Terry, is the best online educational content. And uh, the winner last year was the Rhinestone World's YouTube channel. And 68% uh, of the votes uh, was uh, how they they won there. So uh, the Rhinestone World, as you said, always very um competitive in these. Uh, in fact, the, the year that uh, they didn't realize that the Reggies were happening and, and didn't put it out there, uh, they put it out after things were closed. And, and I probably got a thousand emails and <laughs> every single one of them was replied with the same thing. Hey, we just facilitate. Sorry, you guys missed it. Uh, make sure to check us out in October next year. So, <laughs> so well, they, they showed up. <laughs> they didn't miss it in 2018. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So definitely. So uh, that that was uh, number four, Terry. So what about number five? Uh, best industry educator. Speaking of the rhinestone world, <laughs> Matt, <laughs> Matt Vasallo uh, won that with uh, with 57 percent of the vote. And anybody who uh, who knows Matt Vasallo knows that he is a great educator. Matt came into the in industry uh, as a, as a teacher. Mm -hmm. and uh and high school start, teacher high school teacher right <laughs> which is so, really hard <laughs> so uh and, and you know when he's doing his seminars at at the shows if you get up to leave he goes hey 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 you need a pass no he doesn't do it. <laughs> but walks uh, around with a ruler too it's weird. <laughs> <right>. <laughs> no matt's uh matt's a, a great friend of the show and uh and an awesome educator i just uh love having you on the show and and I catch myself at trade shows if he's anywhere nearby, kind of listening in on his presentation, trying to pick up some presentation tips of my own. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, good stuff there for Matt. Okay, so uh, the sixth uh, category, and Terry, just uh, make sure you're looking at the uh, outline there because I did make a, a quick change. Uh, so we've got nine instead of 10, remember? So, <laughs> um, so uh, number six is uh, the best industry trade show. And uh, last year, Dak Chicago uh, took home the win there with 45% of the vote. That was the uh, first time that uh, ISS Long Beach was unseated. So uh, right. five years in a row. Years, five years in a row. Uh, yeah. Five, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Five years. And then the sixth year uh, was Dak Chicago. So seventh year, let's see, uh, let's see what happens there. There's some, there's some great shows, you know, you know, uh, we love the Dak shows. We also love the uh, ISS shows and, and uh, so all fantastic shows. And, and, and again, that same kind of deal, you know, they, they kind of fought it out, but uh, everybody was really happy for everybody that won and, and the recognition there. So again, it's that abundance mentality. We're all, right raising the tide right is that how that goes um, exactly right exactly right and, <laughs> and you know uh, the the thing about the uh now the impressions expo is in long beach i think the the one it's for so many years because of of the shows uh nbm shows uh impressions expo deck show that that show in uh in long beach to kick off the year is really a national show as opposed to a regional show all the other shows are fairly regional but mm -hmm. uh but uh, you know that's uh, uh, 
uh, of course, I will be there. I go to all the shows. It's it makes <laughs> me kind of sad to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you don't even have to. Basically, the easier list, Terry, would be for you to say which shows you're not going to. And exactly. Like, <laughs> exactly. Like a half of one. <laughs> like right. you left early from one, maybe. So. <laughs> right, right. Sometimes I do a rock start into the DAC shows. I'll get there That's the right. night before, do my seminars, and uh, be heading to the airport by 4 o'clock. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, what's number seven there, Terry? Number seven, most influential young star. And I, I think we introduced this one this past year. Yeah. Right? yeah last year yeah. was the first time. And yeah. uh, it's for 40 and under. So 40 and, 40 under, and so, under. Yeah. I just missed it. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> last year, it was, again, Lisa Potts. She took home two awards last year. Uh, Lisa with the Rhinestone World, and she won that with 55% of the vote. And, and you know, I, I'm excited about this category because it's 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 so much fun to see new people entering the industry yeah. and uh and young people entering the industry and and i'm sure that uh, we will be seeing lisa uh around the industry for many years to come nice yep definitely and uh yeah i'm, I'm excited to see who the who the nominees are going to be this year and and uh you know our, my goal will be to get every single one of them on our show so yeah <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right. So the eighth uh, category is the best guest on the two regular guys podcast. And uh, that was an overwhelming win for Matt Vasallo of the rhinestone world. Uh, as you can see, you get catching a theme here. Um, <laughs> he had 72% of the votes and uh, you know, the, the really interesting part about that win too was uh his show was actually early on in the year in January. So a lot of times, you know, we've seen that category kind of uh, people towards the end of the year on the show kind of get, get that, you know, cause top of mind kind of thing. Uh, right. But uh, you know, obviously Matt, Matt brings a big crew with him. So I uh, definitely don't ever want to get in a street fight with Matt. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, Aaron, and, and something interesting about that show is I, I, I distinctly remember that show and, and mainly because most of us, you know, when we interview folks, it's just like we're doing right now. You know, we're sitting in front of a camera and, mm -hmm. and, and, and chatting. Well, Matt wasn't. Matt was standing with a camera on him and he had all of his supplies around him and he was grabbing this and grabbing that and showing it to the camera. And, yeah. Yeah. and it was just uh, it, it was a memorable show. So, yeah, um, for sure. And it's, it's always interesting, you know, what, as the two regular guys podcast, you know, podcast is the, the key term for us. And, and so we, we do capture this on, on video as Terry just mentioned, but, but a bulk of our, um, interactions a bulk of the people that listen in are catching us on the podcast version and uh but but matt's particular show there was a lot of people that, that is like oh i need to get on and watch the video version of that right. See, and when you look at the analytics of of that particular show it's uh it's through the roof so <laughs> good stuff there um all right terry well the last category that we have laid out here is the best ambassador for the industry and um, my good friend uh, Hollywood Joe, <laughs> Joe Piazza with Caesar, not Cicer, um, as, <laughs> as uh, many people have uh, mentioned, uh, won that award last year for forty-five percent of the votes. And um, you know, we're not really sure if it's just because he's a really attractive guy, but uh, he is a fantastic <laughs> ambassador for the industry. I mean, he is. the education that he does, the things that he does with the folks over at Caesar is is great. He's a wonderful guy and i keep telling him uh because he's also an aspiring actor and has done some really good work actually uh in fact he's got a new comedy coming out soon um in fact I'll, I'll ping him about that and see if we can get that shared because it's it's really cool to watch him act too and i said all right just remember remember the little guys remember the two regular guys <laughs> when you're famous you know when when you're <laughs> Uh, when you're holding up the uh, Academy Award <laughs> Academy Award <laughs> nomination there, that what do they call the little guy though? Oscar. Oscar. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> when you're holding up your Oscar, just make sure you take up your uh, two regular guys best industry ambassador plaque with you. <laughs> this was my because first. They award. will be of equal value. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Um, so good stuff there, Terry. Uh, the other part about the nominations and and whatnot is there is a uh, space at the bottom where you can create your own category, not necessarily create it for you. And again, it's got to, we've got to at least have uh, five people nominated there to, to do that, but we're happy to add categories where categories are needed. So, so remember that space, put something in there if you'd like. And um, you know, so if we get five people uh, 
kind of doesn't have to be the exact same, but you know, in that same ballpark, we can make a new category if we need. And then um, the other thing to note there, Terry, is is that we also do. Uh, it'll be November fifteenth this year. We do a nomination show to announce the nominees. And we announce every single person and we try to get, you know, get some details about them so we can kind of share. So even if you don't actually make the, the, the last five list, everybody that's nominated will get announced and, and will be recognized. So, you know, nominations in and of itself are, are a big deal. As far as I'm concerned, I've been nominated before and it, man, it just made me feel really, really good. So yeah, exactly. Terry, right. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, um, well, this is always an exciting thing anyway. And, uh, and, uh, as you know, we've mentioned, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger every year. So, um, we'll, uh, we'll be sharing out there on social media. Hopefully, uh, all the regulators will be sharing this as well so mm -hmm. that, uh, people know about the, uh, the upcoming event. Maybe, maybe, you know, not everybody listens to this show here and I know it's kind of a shocker, but, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I did, my brain just fried right there, Terry. I cannot compute. Um, so you know what? Todd actually already has a good category that we didn't even, uh, I think we mentioned it last year, and I wrote it down somewhere in my scratch, but uh, uh, Todd says best Facebook group. Wasn't that or something like that last year? Um, you, I, we kind of, I think, almost rolled that into, but maybe be separating that out might be might be worthwhile. Yeah, I, you know, I think we rolled it back into online education, as yeah. I recall. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, hey. and, and and you know, Aaron, the uh, the uh, the Young Star Award that uh, that was a recommendation from uh, from regulars uh, yeah. who who uh, wanted to recognize some the the young folks in the industry. So, yeah, okay, well. You know what? Like like you said, Terry, it's our job to facilitate and uh, what the regulators want, the regulators get. So uh, that's right. <laughs> category number 10. I will go fix that uh, right after we're done here today. Category. Well, we'll, we'll put it in there because we like having the ambassador be the last one. But uh, new category just announced best uh, Facebook group. There we go. Very good. Awesome. Uh, All right, Aaron. Well, with that, let's uh, let's take a, a break and hear a word from our sponsor, Ace Transfer. Excellent. Yep. So let's do that right now. Have you been looking to grow your business or start one in the garment decoration industry? After all, that's why you're listening, right? Ace Transfer Company is located in Springfield, Ohio, and we've provided our customers with high quality transfers, competitive prices, and great customer service for nearly 30 years. Ace Transfer Company offers a wide variety of garment decoration services, including screen printed transfers, contract screen printing, direct to garment or DTG, dye sublimation, signs, banners, heat transfer vinyl, pressure sensitive vinyl, and more. Use your own designs or have our in-house artists assist you in creating eye-catching transfers. At ACE, we are dedicated to helping your business succeed. So print your vision at ACE. For more information, visit our website, acetransfercompany.com. Send us an email at acetransco at gmail.com. That's A-C-E-T-R-A-N-S-C-O at gmail. Or give us a call at 800-525-3126. All right. Well, thanks to Ace Transfer. David at uh, Ace Transfer has been a longtime supporter of the show and uh, uh, very, very happy that uh, they are now one of our sponsors. Yeah, definitely. So um, real quick, Terry, before we get uh, get into the question, the burning question, I'm going to put you <laughs> on that hot seat and uh, we're going to find out what the future of screen printing holds. I want to get to a couple of other quick comments from the regulators here and uh Let's see here. So yeah, and talking about the Facebook group uh, uh, category that we've just officially added. Uh, oh, that's a good one. Not just because I have a group that could be in contention this year. <laughs> nice. The, the, the first self-promotion of... Uh... Yeah, and, and Todd says, me too, huh? And he was the suggester. Anyhow. It's the second one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but I, I just wanted to say good morning to Jesse. Uh, good, always having, good having Jesse check in. Morning to regular guys and the regulators. So, uh and then, uh, oh, here we go. Todd says old guard award that would that, 
would we fall in that category? That, that's us. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we're not, we're not starting that one, Todd, but if there's enough <laughs> write in nominations and you know, we'll figure it out, but uh, all right, good stuff. Hey there, Pilar. Thank you for joining us this morning. All right, Terry. Well, let's, let's do this. It's, are you ready? You feel confident? You feel like you can answer this question? I, I think I can uh, start a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, good. Well, so just start us off by just giving us the quick overview of, of, today, right now, what the current relationship is between screen printing and, and digital printing, you know, direct to garment or otherwise. Well, you know, Aaron, and and I'm sure you recall this happening many times uh, <laughs> back 15 many years times. ago. Yeah, many times. 15 years ago, Scott Fresner uh, at trade shows and even at the screen printing classes, because, you know, back in those days, that's where you went to learn how to screen print. You went to mm -hmm. the U.S. Screen Printing Institute yep. and Scott would announce in the class Screen, uh, screen printing will be gone in two to three years. <laughs> and I would, I would walk in because here's how class worked. It was Scott Fresner's class. Scott would introduce himself, hold up the how to print t-shirts uh, for fun and profits book. And then he would say, and here's Terry, who's going to teach your class. <laughs> and, uh, and so before Scott could leave the room, I would say that is entirely incorrect. <laughs> and, uh, it, but, but, uh, he, he really believed it at the time. In fact, uh, uh, just a few years ago, he came up to me and he goes, you know, you were right all along. It's this is uh, direct to garment printing is just going to be another avenue uh, for screen printers. But yeah. but as to the relationship and, and and here's something else that this is kind of what spurred my my thoughts on, on, on digging into this is uh, at the Denver uh, NBM show, mm -hmm. uh, somebody came up to me from uh, one of the manufacturers and said, so what do you think? What's going to happen to screen printing? And I thought, well, that's an interesting question to be asking me. You know, you're, you're a manufacturer of, of manual and automatic printing equipment. And then a week later in, uh, in Fort Worth, uh, someone from another manufacturer came up to me and said, so what do you think, Terry? What's going to happen with screen printing with all this digital stuff going on? And I thought, wow, yeah. this is the this is a big question that 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 people are are struggling with, but but here's where we are right now. Uh, long run work is still going to be screen printing. It's that short term customer, that that customer who says, uh, and I've said this on the show many times. Why can't you do three? Uh, Cafe Press can do three. Zazzle can do three. Uh -huh. This company over here can do three, and so. Uh, you know, and and I do have my finger on the pulse of it. I teach screen printing classes. I'm still heavily involved in screen printing, but mm -hmm. I also do a lot of classes and seminars on direct to garment printing. And and I I talk to people who do or entering the direct to garment business uh, every single day. So um, it, it's going to be continue to be, in my opinion, that that uh, two parts to the to the process. It's going to be, you know, screen printers will admit to you, you know, I, I can do a full color print. I can do a photographic image on a t-shirt and, and that's what I'm going to have up on the wall, you know, in my shop. Yeah. But the person who's buying this product, it, they're going to be, uh, they're going to be, um, buying one and two and three color work, you know, yeah. Yeah. and it, don't make fun of me, Aaron, Jim's towing service, fun number <laughs> on the back. That That's, that's the screen printing customer. Now, uh, you also are going to have to deal with those folks who walk in and say, Hey, I'm having a family reunion, 17 people, little Susie's a two, four and uncle Bob, he's a four X and I don't want to pay for extra screens. Yeah. And that that's the perfect customer that that screen printer is going to say, Hey, I want to, um, uh, I, I want to be able to service that customer too, because you don't want them going down the street because that down the street, that person who's got a direct garment printer or mm -hmm. has sublimation capability, uh, they're also a screen printer, all, you know, it, that, that could take your business away. For so sure. For that's sure. where we're today, in my opinion. OK. All right. Good stuff. And I, when you said don't make fun of me for this, I it didn't really know what to do because our, our whole entire relationship for the <laughs> <laughs> 12, however, 20, nearly 20 years, something like that, some crazy amount of time that uh, we've been doing this together is based on uh, me and you making fun of each other. So. That's that's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was so, making fun of myself by saying that. <laughs> all right. Cool. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Christine had mentioned that you need a Swami hat and a crystal ball so uh yes <laughs> just I, like johnny I, carson yeah, and, yeah i just sure. dated myself again <laughs> <laughs> um all right good stuff and uh 
Yep. Jesse agrees. It will continue to complement garment decorating businesses. So good stuff there. So Terry, um, you know, Cindy kind of mentions, yeah, I was just going to say, try printing 600 plus on a, on a direct to garment, you know, that uh, <laughs> is a little tough, but, but what separates digital from, from screen printing then, you know, it, there's, there's certainly a lot of things that happen with there, you know, when somebody comes to you and says, Hey, w why should I go DTG? I'm a screen printer. You know, I could do all this stuff. So give us, give us that rundown. Would you? Well, and, and Cindy's exactly correct. It's all about production speed because, uh, you know, realistically, unless you're investing, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars into, into a DTG printer, you're, you're going to get, you know, a, a color shirt, anything with a white underbase, you're going to uh -huh. get maybe 25 pieces an hour. You know, of course, depending on the image size, but yeah, uh, you know, white shirts you're going to do better with. You're going to do you know fifty to sixty pieces an hour, but but you know it's going to be a longer production time. But um, you know, with, with as I mentioned before, the the bread and butter butter of that screen printer for that screen printer is going to be one, two, and three color mm -hmm. work. But yep. uh, and and here's the here's the other thing that separates uh, direct to garment and sublimation from screen printing. You're never going to be able to do puffs and suede and gels and metallics and all those those cool things that that you could do as a screen printer uh, on a direct to garment printer. It's just not going to be uh, not going to be the 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 way that you would accomplish that. Yeah. So, um, you know, you also, a lot of folks think that direct to garment printing uh, isn't going to have the washability of a screen print. And that's partly true in that Plastisol ink, which most screen printers still use, is it, PVC, it's plastic. So um, uh, our buddy Wade, uh, who's a was a screen printer many years up in uh, Seattle, would always say, you know, a thousand years from now in the landfill, that T-shirt has will have disintegrated, but that print will still be laying there on the ground. Um, so, <laughs> but but with direct to garment printing, as as long as you have pre-treated the shirt properly, and as long as you you cured it properly, you're going to get 50 plus washings. And in our industry, 50 plus washings is considered a a permanent print. And uh, so, what you have to really compare with though is water-based screen printing and 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 direct to garment printing because direct to garment is also water-based and, and they're going to have the same uh, type of washability. But uh, you know, another thing to compare is is setup time and teardown time and screen printing. And I preach about this uh, that that that's what separates one screen printer from the next is is their efficiency. But but lower quantities, uh, it's just not practical for a screen printer to set up six screens to do a full color image when you can take that same file and and start printing immediately. So yeah. that's uh, there's definitely a um, a cutoff point. And, and people say, well, where at what point do I go to screen printing? And yeah. and and that's a tough call because. I know direct to garment printers who have one machine who will take an order for a thousand shirts. Now, yeah, I would never do that because you're talking about um, you're still printing two weeks from Tuesday, but uh, that maybe they don't have the capability to do um, to do screen printing. Or and here's the other thing that you have to take into account. Yeah. You know, yes, you can do a full color image with direct to garment printing and a photographic image. You can do that in screen printing too, but there aren't very many screen printers who can do it. Now, even if they wanted to, it's a, hey, it's a thousand pieces. They're going to be jobbing it out because that that is definitely a, another level of screen printing uh, that is, uh, it's certainly not out of the grasp of, of most screen printers, but they just uh, don't choose to, to, yeah. to do it. Yeah. So. Interesting. Okay. All right. Uh, that, uh, that certainly makes a lot of sense. And like I said, there's not a, <laughs> I love that, you know, everybody once, you know, and I think all of us want, you know, what, what's that magic bullet, Terry? If, if you just tell me that it's 72 pieces beyond that, I should screen print, you, you know, then, then I can make sense of that. But all these variables that you've got to, got to think about it's, it, it is really important. And, and honestly, it's going to work for some and it's not going to work for others. You, you have right. to make decisions based on, on what your business is and then what you're good at. But uh, it really, really important stuff that you shared with us there. In fact, uh, Todd said that uh, in the 10 minutes that I talked to Terry in Denver about DTG, he made it all make sense to me. Uh, the man is a genius. So there well, you thanks, go. Thanks, Todd. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and glitter. I like glitter.
glitter. <laughs> Todd, Todd's <laughs> a brave man. It, you know, in uh, in Denver, it was about 30 degrees when I was on my way to breakfast and I ran into Todd and his group uh, in the restaurant and he was in shorts and flip-flops. So it's, <laughs> he's a better man than me. <laughs> yeah, I was all bundled up. And <laughs> <laughs> he's a better man than most of us, Terry. So we're good. <laughs> right. All right. Well, so Terry, let's, let's, yes. Where's your Swami hat? Where's your crystal ball? Yeah, <laughs> you got it. You're set. You're ready to go. What's what's the future relationship here then between direct garment and screen printing? Well, you know, for the last few years, and and we'll certainly uh, be seeing it next next week at Printing United. But uh-huh. you, you you these combo units where um there's they're an automatic press. It's screen printing a, a white underbase. It's coming mm-hmm. over and it's got a a a, a large format uh, inkjet head printing the image. But you know it, it's it's all, yes, it's on an automatic press, but it's running so slowly that you could probably do the same thing on a manual press. Huh. Uh, it, it, they're more like prototypes, I think. Yeah. It, they're they're saying, okay, he, here's where we're going with this. Gotcha. But gotcha. Uh, but but you know, it's it it it's like uh, when the first cars came out. Yeah, they they work, but you got to be a mechanic, and you got yeah <laughs> yeah totally. But so- uh, but but it will it will allow though for after that print's done to add the gels, add the puffs, add the glitter, those types of things as well. But, okay. but I don't think it's there yet. All right. All right. Well, so I, I actually have a question then for you, Terry. So the thing I don't, you know, I'm not involved in that on a daily basis as, as you are. So the one question I've always had about, you know, the, this kind of prototype hybrid thing. So does that take away the pre-treat need or how does that work then? Well, um, if, if uh, the, the, if they are doing the white underbase with a with a a screen printing water base ink, it would take away the 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 need to to do uh, pre treating because well, the purpose of pre treating is is to is to give a, a base uh, of basically salt mm-hmm. water for yeah. the white ink to to sit on top of. But uh, screen printing water base ink is uh, you know will stay up on top of the shirt so. Yeah. Uh, it, it would alleviate that, but gosh, it, I think it, it, that would, this would still only be effective for longer runs because there's going to be that screen printing setup involved in it. And, yeah. and, and add to that is, is your ink cost. Um, the, with the DTG printer, you're looking at on average, a white shirt, about 50 cents, a, a color shirt, about $2 in ink cost, depending on the image size. I mean, if it's a, if it's a huge image, uh, it, it could be four or five dollars in, in ink cost yeah. uh, per shirt, whereas a, a screen printer, every print's going to be pennies. So, yeah. uh, you know, the ink costs are going to have to come down for for that to to be effective, because on these longer run orders, you're not getting twenty dollars a shirt like a short a short run order. And, and that's the standard price here across the the, the industry is a DTG printed shirt sells for about $20 and up. And the highest I've seen is 40, but uh, you know, in a, in a really narrow niche market, it's, if somebody's ordering a thousand shirts, they're not going to want to pay. They're, they're going to want to pay screen printing prices yeah. and screen printing prices. You, you're not going to be competitive with DTG, even yeah. with, and, and somebody says, uh, somebody uh, said, how about so many hundred machines or hundred, uh, uh, garments. Well, what people are doing that are only direct to garment printers, they are buying multiple machines. I, I, there are, there are, I know two companies that have eight printers. Um, and, um, there are companies that have 250 DTG printers out there. So, but, but they're not doing a thousand pieces. They're doing a thousand one and two and three piece orders. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, that, that. that's the difference. But, you know, Aaron, and, and the world's changing too, though, because, uh, you know, we know folks who uh, in the industry who, who have automatic presses who, who say that my customer doesn't want to order 10,000 pieces anymore. My yeah. customer wants to order 100 pieces every week so that, that the inventory is put back on me as a decorator as opposed to them having a warehouse full of garments that they will or won't sell. Mm-hmm. So the, the industry for for screen printing is changing as well. And I, I think there are going to be a lot of folks who um, I, I think there'll be a lot of folks who 
are going to be going more towards manual printing and 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 uh, or at least having a portion of their production operation be manual for these uh, these customers that only want a hundred of this and a hundred of that. Yeah, yeah, no, right. I I think you're you're exactly right with with all of that, and um, it is interesting to see, like you said, that that whole eight printers or you know this production because yes, they are not doing a thousand ten thousand of the exact same thing right. every shirt is different and and you know that's what's really happening in in my world in the sublimation world it's you know people are like oh you know I, what's the price if i do a thousand of these versus one of these and it's like same price um, <laughs> <laughs> right. it doesn't change anything for me it can all be different i don't care right. you know as long as i got artwork to print that's different then it doesn't really matter and and that's but but i think that becomes you know, like you said, these people are expecting this screen printed price for things. And it's your job to educate them on the process on, you know, okay, yes, if you're going to do uh, 10,000 of the same thing, we can create some efficiencies within our production process as right. a screen printer. But if you're going to do, you know, a thousand of the same thing, and I've got a direct garment printer, you don't really create any efficiencies there. <laughs> so there's no cost savings and there's no cost exactly. savings to be able to pass along. And, and so it is about education there. So, you, what, you know, and I, 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 I have, uh, I'm going to look into my crystal ball and tell you something else that I, All I, right. in thinking about this, I think that new decorators who are doing screen printing and they're also doing direct to garment printing mm -hmm. or, or maybe sublimation. I think that when they get an order for a, a, a full color photographic representation, that they are just automatically going to go to the direct to garment printer, which means I think that the pool of master printers, and I call a master printer, somebody that can do that photographic image uh, on a, on a, on a dark t-shirt, the lawn winners of the world. Yep, I yep. think that pool is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller because I think that, uh, that decorators are going to be lazy and, and not take the time and, and the hours and hours and hours of, of effort to learn how to do those types of images. So, yeah. so that for that master printer out there, uh, that means I think there's going to be more and more business for that decorator uh, the, the, the decorator that chooses to be an expert screen printer. I think that, that they're there, the pool is going to get smaller, which means more business for the folks that, that actually learn how to do this. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a, that's, that's a really great point, Terry, you know, put in, put in the hours. I'm actually in the middle of reading a book called, uh, so good. They can't ignore you by uh, Cal Newport. And, uh, it, it really, you know, obviously it's not what we're talking about here, but the point being you just, focus and get so good at your niche at your area that you build up this career capital business capital that you can then go exchange for you know i mean it, it you know it reminds me of uh, the young lady that we talked to about about bling and for some reason i just lost her name too todd will help me in just a second <laughs> kelly kelly defreeze um right and you know, she got so good at what she did and created the tools and focused on the glues and and just really put in all the effort and the work to get so good that people couldn't ignore her. And now she's getting more money than she ever dreamed of charging. She's getting more. Um, she's turning away work because she is the best at her craft, you know, and so, like I said, if you're a screen printer out there and you're wondering, you know, where am I going to be? Well, decide what you want to do. Do you want to become the best at this? We'll go you, do it, learn it. Yeah. You know, Aaron, another example is uh, when we had Pierre Jim Nicky on, on our show yeah. and, uh, and, and asked the question, how did you become an award-winning screen printer in only three years? And he yeah. goes, well, it's really, it was really easy. I just worked a hundred hours a week. <laughs> and that was Super easy. The, and then that, that stuck with me. And I thought, yeah, that's that's how you become an expert. You put in the time, you put in the effort, and and uh uh you know, there are always rewards for that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So Terry got a question in here from uh, one of the regulars. Cindy said, and I'm not really a question, but I want you to address this because I think some of this is uh from the old days, from back in the old days when when I was creating problems in the direct to garment world. Uh so yeah, just talk to talk to the point of some talk about this for small shops, but if you're not using regularly, you're having problems with clogging, lots more to maintain. So that, it, that's, that's changed, right? A, a it, bit, it, it, to a certain extent it has. Okay. And, and that's an 
excellent question, Cindy. The, uh, here's the, the thing about directed garment printing. There are two types of directed garment printers. Some of them are, are manufactured using component parts from desktop paper printers. Yeah. Those are the ones that you're going to have uh, clogging issues with. And, and you know, all the machines, when Aaron and I used to sell T-Jets, those were converted over paper printers. And, yep. and so you had to print every day. You had to leave it running all the time. If you left it for three days, you, you had to, uh, you know, uh, uh, flush out all the ink. Uh, there are other machines today that are manufactured from the ground up as direct to garment printers, which means the print head is made to work with a direct to garment ink system. So, uh, you know, those machines, you could turn off for two weeks, come back and turn back on and, and start printing again. And, and here's an example, uh, you know, we, uh, Equipment Zone has a showroom down here in Tempe. Well, it, it, I only go there if I have a demo. And, and so the five people that work there, we all have home offices also. Mm -hmm. Last Christmas, nobody walked in that office for three weeks. Yeah. And came in after three weeks, turned on the the Epson F2100 uh, and did a head cleaning and started printing shirts again. And that's in Phoenix where we had 10 percent humidity. Yeah. And, and needless to say, our humidifier had run out of water. Uh, a week into that three weeks. So. Yeah, for sure. For <laughs> sure. Oh man, somebody's might have, the job might have been on the line there, but uh, <laughs> glad it worked out. Um, well, good. Cause, yeah, I just wanted to address that because I, you know, I know a lot of things have changed and, and, uh, you know, that's important. So, you know, I mean, honestly, to me, I look at, look at it and go, if they're willing to warranty the print head, yeah, uh, they kind of feel like that's gone away. So um. exactly right. <laughs> so. And, and so and so, uh, you know, uh, Epson and Brother uh, both have uh, warranties on the print heads. So yeah, yeah good. Keep that in mind. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and when we're talking about being uh, so good, they can't ignore you or, you know, that kind of like be the master craftsman there. Um, yeah. Eric mentioned this and Eric actually, to me also is a perfect example of this. You know, lots of us are, are 10 year overnight successes, right? <laughs> but, you know, think about, think about when you and I first met Eric, Terry, the, the joke was, is that he was chained to the desk digitizing and, right. you know, and that's what he was doing 24 seven. Well, he was doing that 24 seven, you know, it, it, it was, it was a fun joke and we were, it had a good time with it, but it was also the truth. And, and, and you know, now when people want to know about digitizing, there's not too many other people I can think of that you want to turn to. And so exactly. you know, he, he put in the work, he, he became a master craftsman there and, and uh, there we are. So exactly. All right. Well, did we, we cover that well enough? We're going to, be able to wrap it up here you think well the regulators will have to tell us but i think we uh, think we touched <laughs> on all the high points <laughs> i think we did too great stuff thank you for sharing that uh, information terry it definitely uh, i learned something today myself so i love it um right <laughs> <laughs> uh so yeah yeah eric says i didn't even stop for the interviews sometimes so um i, I remember he 10, would be on the hours. show and we'd ask him while while we were talking to him are you digitizing right now yeah and he'd yeah. be yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that was before we did the video. So uh, right. you know, he, he was able to uh, to do that. And we're like, we, wait a second. We hear the keyboard in the background, Eric. What's going on? <laughs> kidding. All right. Um, well, speaking of Eric, uh, I do want you guys to go check out his latest article on what we were just talking about, digitizing pixel embroidery. It's out in Printware Magazine. And uh, Eric will get us the details on where to check that out. But just go over to Printware Magazine and uh, digitizing pixel embroidery would be the article to check out there. Terry, what about you? What uh, what do you got coming up here? Well, I will be at Printed uh, Printing United, formerly SGIA, in Dallas next week. So stop by the Equipment Zone booth to say hello. Um, it's in the 5,000 aisle, I believe. We're right across from a huge Epson booth, so you can't miss us. We're doing uh, seminars for 10 to 15 minutes on the hour, every hour. And it's not just the folks from Equipment Zone. We're going to have Sanmar there. Uh, we're going to have uh, lots of, uh, lots of, Dane Clement's going to be doing a seminar every day. And lots of folks from the industry. We're going to have guest speakers there. So come and check that out. And then we'll have the schedule posted there in the booth. Uh, next, uh, well, I'm going to leave Nashville on, or I'm sorry, I'm going to leave then where am I going? <laughs> I'm going to leave Dallas. Yeah. Get, oh get the big book of travels out, Terry. Terry's yeah. big book of travels. <laughs> I'm going to leave Dallas on Friday after the show and go to Nashville to do a class with Atlas Screen Supply uh, for my uh, complete screen printing business course. That, that class is actually sold out. 
Um, I'm going to be the following week. I'm going to be in Phoenix at Workhorse Products, November 2nd and 3rd, doing that class. I'm going to wrap up the year uh, in Chicago doing the Atlas class there. That's going to be November 16th and 17th. And all my upcoming 2020 events, you can find at terrycombs.com and click on tour dates. All right. Outstanding. So uh, just a quick side note. Did, did you ever hear, have they worked out the acronym for Printing United yet? Or is it still? <laughs> Everybody's causing, calling it PU, man. <laughs> yeah. Still causing some consternation. All right. Well, I'll see you at PU. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I said that to somebody yesterday and they said, uh, yeah, they're like, what is that? Uh, yeah, that's a whole different story. All right. Well, um, I have got uh, my Small Business Saturday, as we're going to do it tomorrow at 7 a.m. Uh, topic yet to be determined. So regulators, you uh, have any suggestions for, for topics? I'm, uh, I'm all ears. I've got a couple that I'm batting around that I can talk about, but uh, nothing set in stone yet. So that'll be 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. So I've got plenty of time to figure that out, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so over at my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Aaron Montgomery dot info for Small Business Saturdays. Love love doing that and uh, excited to like i said whatever you guys want to talk about it, it it becomes a more of a discussion you know so we're all learning me included so it, it just it's been fantastic um still uh, got the webinar coming up i haven't chickened out on it yet so i'm no, just kidding uh becoming a, dig a digital marketing superhero is the title of that and that's going to be happening november 11 2019 and great to uh oh todd says he's available so it may be uh aaron and todd talking so uh yeah um coffee talk i like it maybe that's go. we we did say we we're gonna do it monthly and i think it's been over a month since uh, i had him over there so <laughs> changing real quick there but uh anyhow my my webinar uh aaron montgomery info slash marketing is where to go sign up for that uh through the end of the month here you will get a 25 dollar discount on that uh program i'm i'm limiting it to only 50 people uh, so we can have lots of good Q and A. Plus, uh, I want to do some one-on-one -on -one stuff after the class with folks that have signed up. So, uh, use the code Regulators for that. Uh, that uh, will get you that twenty-five dollars off that webinar. And then, uh, not not me necessarily, but we've got some other great stuff coming up here. Eric Campbell is going to be presenting that's easy for me to say <laughs> demystifying digitizing. It's also a tongue twister, so I like that. Uh, March 28th, 2020. So more details will be coming on that soon. Uh, Eric, I will be uh, touching base with you soon. I've got uh, kind of a plan laid out for us to make that happen. Um, Marshall Atkinson, who I think he had to bail out, but uh, was joining us in the comments here today. Uh, he's got his six steps to kill your production downtime e-learning course uh, available right now for an introductory price of only $497.50. Uh, and in and, and talking to him over there at ISS Fort Worth, uh, the amount of money that you can save yourself to uh, kill that production downtime will, will pay for this course very quickly. So uh, definitely check that out. And uh, then our good friend, uh, Dane Clement, who you mentioned is going to be in your booth with you there at uh, PU, is doing... <laughs> <laughs> doing an art in separations for screen printed apparel uh, through the SGIA group. And that's happening December 2nd through the 3rd. So uh, we'll, we'll get that uh, posted up in the links as well. Aaron, let me throw <laughs> something else in for Dane also. Sure. Uh, just last week, he he came out with his uh, his book on preparing artwork for direct-to-garment printing. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and so that's available for, I believe, $99. And it's uh, it's pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm not laughing about that. I'm laughing about some of the comments too. Yes, that we, we got to talk to Dane at uh, at the Fort Worth show, and and that made the made the cut. We talked to a lot of people at Fort Worth show. So uh, the like we said there in Fort Worth, Terry, that that show was uh, the amount of stuff that we captured. You can go watch all the videos, but uh, the actual podcast version, we we had two shows at least. So um, the second part half, uh, I think. What we'll do with that in you know you can agree or disagree right now but you know <laughs> i think we'll be okay but the second half of that we'll just play uh it, it'll just show up as the show for the thanksgiving show that we normally skip oh very good so yeah. we we won't be doing anything live that week but uh, i will go ahead and post that show uh that uh, friday after thanksgiving the uh, the second half of the fort worth interviews that we did so um the first half is already out and you can go check that out and uh, hopefully you've already listened to that um so good stuff there 
All right, uh, man, lots of great uh, comments happening though. I was chuckling along the way. And uh, again, if you go to euquid.com, <laughs> <laughs> Todd has uh, hooked me up on that one there. So thanks, Todd. <laughs> uh, and E Rich is presenting midgets. Sounds like a good show. <laughs> uh, oh boy. All right, we're going to get way off the here. We should probably wrap this up. So come to the close of another show, uh, get out there and vote. I will get the nomination form fixed. So we have 10 categories now, including the uh, best Facebook group uh, section. So uh, give me about uh, 30 minutes and that will be updated, but go ahead and start placing your nominations. And thank you very much, Terry. That was really good information today on, on uh, the future of screen printing. I, I really appreciate you sharing that with us here. Today. Awesome. It's uh fun to think about and talk about. So, and uh, hey, make sure everyone share the uh, the, the voting information on, on all your social media so we can get a, a really great cross-section of, uh, of folks out there yeah. uh, who, you know, maybe some folks that we don't know that that can be nominated and, and, and possibly win these awards. So yeah, uh, sure. we also want to thank our show producer, Eric Campbell. You can find him at ericcampbell.com. And thanks to our sponsors, Impressions Expo and Ace Transfer. Absolutely. And uh, next week, Terry is going to be at uh, PU Printing United. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble for doing that. Uh, <laughs> so it, it will, uh, it, Terry will be gone and uh, doing his thing there at in Dallas. So um, it's going to be myself speaking with Kayla Gayton, who's going to be joining us to discuss marketing versus branding. And uh, really excited to get her on the show. Uh, she's been in the uh, women in the industry podcast before and and uh is an up and coming uh star really in my mind in, in, in our industry so i can't wait to get her take on marketing and branding her and i will be geeking out over this subject so <laughs> it, it should be a lot of fun so tune in for that uh on the 25th of october very good uh, kayla is the marketing director if anyone doesn't know uh for atlas screen supply yeah, in chicago you. so Definitely. uh but uh, until then aaron uh, i'm terry combs he's aaron montgomery and we are the Two Regular Guys. Thank you for listening to Two Regular Guys. Check out our website at tworegularguys.com. That's the number two, regularguys.com. You can also interact with us over at our Facebook page, facebook.com slash tworegularguys, or send us a tweet, twitter.com slash tworegularguys. And we have a YouTube page. You can find all that from our website, tworegularguys.com. Thanks for tuning in, and we look forward to spending some time with you again next week.